All right, we are back on the IS300 now. It's been about a week. I've been doing some testing, trying to get it broken or broken in rather so that we can see if we're gonna have leaks, breaks, stuff like that before we get on the dyno and cost ourselves more money. Now it's pretty much ready to go, but instead of just going and dynoing it how it is, we're going to pull the ECU out and redo everything in favor of a brand new Haltech Nexus R3. I'm really stoked to say that they have partnered with me on this car and they've given me everything we need to make all the power we want, to see everything that's going on, and it's gonna be a much more reliable, much cooler setup in pretty much every single way. So most importantly, we have a Nexus R3 ECU. It is a VCU, vehicle control unit, so it does have four 25 amp circuits in it. And you can do things like power your fans, trigger your fuel pumps, but also power your fuel pumps. This acts as an actual PDM, not just a trigger where you have to have a relay and everything else preset. You can actually do it completely inside the Nexus R3. Then we have an IC7 dash. I love these things. They're really crispy display wise. The resolution is great. They look really good. And I can't wait to get that in there so I don't have to run some external gauge that uh, you know, to me, it just isn't attractive looking, so I'm really stoked. We got a Mako Motorsports cluster for this to mount in that is uh, on the way. Then we got a CAN keypad. We have an eight button unit, so we can do things like traction control, boost control, uh, boost by gear. Basically, anything we want to set up, we can turn it on or off from this keypad here. With that, we have an expansion pack so that we can basically run all of our CAN stuff into this and then over to our ECU. So in this case, we have two items. We can run each one to this, and then we can run a single plug from here to the ECU, and then anything that goes into this will then be seen here. So overall, it's a really sick package. I'm really stoked. So we have our Nexus R3. Originally, we had our stock ECU here and our old ECU here, and I think the plan is just to put the Nexus right in the middle. That way it looks really clean. We'll obviously build a plate to support it and hold it in place. I just got off the phone with Tweaked. They were really, really helpful. They're backed up so much right now that, uh, they wouldn't even be able to get to my harness revision until next year, which obviously isn't an option. But anyhow, he walked me through kind of some stuff I need to, to worry about given the, uh, the differences between these two ECUs where this one has power and ground ring directly to it, where the old ECU had this relay built in and then the power supply and uh, everything triggers going through the harness. So we're not going to need that this time around. And then also each connector and how they're set up, we're basically going to cut these zip ties back and depin this, cut the pins off at the longest possible wire length I can so that we can repin them. Unfortunately, the pins are different between the two ECUs. And then we have our layout here. So we've got all the VCU wiring here, and then we have the old ECU here. And we have some stuff on the back, uh, basically just information regarding all the pin locations and what they're for. And then we also have the tweak diagram here that came with the harness when I initially ordered it. So between these two things, we should be able to get this thing pretty sorted. Wish me luck. I'll update you guys once I have something worth showing. All right, so I've been making a lot of progress and I pretty much got both of our ECU connectors fully populated. Here's A, here is B, and I've got everything sorted. I got our CAN bus sorted. I had to repin a couple wires here, but thankfully the connector was the same. So we're gonna have our IC7 harness right here go over to our cluster area, of course. And the keypad is probably gonna go somewhere in this area. I'm gonna print a nice little bezel for it. And the last thing to do is sort out the wideband. Right now we have all the wideband wiring hooked up in its proper pin locations, except for the 12 volt switch power. And that's because with the old ECU, it is, uh, it's a shared 12 volt supply, but with the Nexus, it comes straight from the ECU. So what we're gonna do is pull these catch can hoses here, pull this O2 sensor wire back through this looming, and we're gonna find which 12 volt wire it is. We're gonna cut it and seal it up so it's not like a live wire in there. And then we're gonna run a direct wire to the sensor from our ECU, but we're gonna go this way. We're gonna work backwards and get that done. All right, so we got our O2 sensor wiring done for the most part. Catch can needs to go back in, but overall we're ready to go back inside the car. We got our four gauge wires here, black and red, to run to our big lugs on the Nexus unit. So we got power directly in right here, ground right here. What I'm gonna do is tap into this right here. You can see this big zero gauge wire that goes up. It hits a distribution block, and then it goes to our electric power steering and to our fuse box. But I do have one more opening on it, so I'm gonna come off that, snake down through here, and go straight to the side of our ECU. We'll find the best way to route this clean. I might have to aim it down and come down and hit a loop like that. And then for the ground, we're gonna come up and off. And I have a nice ground spot on the dash bar here that's all raw steel and it bolts to the chassis. So that's a nice ground, I think. We're, we'll try that out, see if that works. If so, it'll save me a ton of time. If not, we'll just bite the bullet and wire it back to our battery. Moving on to the cluster, we have the beautiful IC7 here, ready to go. And then I'm pairing it with the Mako Motorsports cluster trim. These are pretty sick. They're also out of Australia and they make these trims that obviously fit you know, whatever your car is, the outer dimensions of that. And then the inside, of course, is spec for your cluster. Went ahead and got one final power up before we pull this cluster out. Wanted to make sure to record the mileage, which we are at 196 to 876. This is the final time we'll see this cluster and all of its Christmas tree lights that love to stay on. All right, there she is. Came out really clean. I would expect nothing less. Such a sick combo. And now the final touch. Bam. 
There we go. Picking back up near the end of our ECU install, we have to do our base timing. So I got my timing light set up here. Got my little plug wire going into my coil and then back to our plug. This is not uncommon. This is just what I configured so that I can read where the timing is so that our gun works. This is obviously done on cylinder one. Got the laptop here. We've locked out our, uh, our timing at zero degrees and we've turned our fuel injectors off. So basically we're just gonna set our, um, our TDC angle so that we can get the, uh, the ECU and the engine on the same page as far as timing. And one of the coolest things you'll notice is we do not have a USB cable running to the laptop. Because the Nexus R3 has Wi-Fi, we can just connect wirelessly. It's a really fast connection. It works great for what we're doing and it's amazing to not have a hugely long USB cable coming across our, our workplace here, our walking path. So. so I'm gonna go ahead and set this base timing real quick and get this dialed in, see if we can get it running decently. And then uh, I'll run through basically everything inside the car as far as the cluster, the ECU mount and all that cool stuff. We got my lovely wife over here cranking the keys. So it turns out our timing was dialed. We did not have to make any changes. I'm glad that's checked. We got it sorted and we can move on to everything else. So off camera, I did put in the 1300cc injectors. Everything looks the same. We just got 1300s instead of 1050s. So when we're on the dyno, we can make the power that, you know, I hope to make. Going to the inside. So a bit of a mess here on the floor, but everything in here is looking pretty nice overall. R3 is mounted super clean. I got my can, all this stuff in place. However, moving on to the coolest part about all this is you'll notice all these goofy looking plugs down here have nowhere to go. So this right here, these three are from the tweaked harness going to the uh, the stock ECU. Now the cool thing is, is the reason it's not in here is because one of these guys on the uh, in the halt tech group hit me up and he was like, you don't need to run the stock ECU in a Lexus, that's a waste of time, get rid of it. And we were only running it to keep the AC and he basically kind of explained to me how to get rid of the, uh, the stock ECU and keep AC. So I'll just summarize this real quick. We basically run a wire that gets hot when my AC light is on. So I went through here with a, uh, a multimeter and I checked all these wires and I found one that had a change in voltage. It doesn't have to necessarily be a switch positive. It can be a switch negative. It can be just a fluctuation in voltage. In this case, it pulls down from like 12 volts to like two volts. So you can go in the ECU and you can say uh, this input when it pulls down from or when it's less than this voltage activate and that's our AC request switch. And I think I use the ignition input because I have some spare ignition input since we can do eight cylinders and we're only running six. And then for the output, um, we're basically grounding the OEM compressor relay. So I ran a digital pulse output to do that. And uh, basically as it sees the input from the switch, it sends ground to the compressor relay, which will then turn it on. However, we have a uh, what's called a condition where it only works if our pressure switch looks good. So we ran the OEM pressure switch into a, uh, an SPI or a synchronized pulse input. And now we have these variables where like if the pressure switch is grounded, then you can ground the compressor when the AC button comes on. So it's, it's not that complicated and I'm really stoked that I took the time to figure it out because getting rid of this stock EC right here is pretty nice. And now I don't have to worry about putting it under the floor or dealing with that. Now, the next thing that we've got to handle, besides kicking that around, is the water temp sensor. Here I've got a couple different things, but basically we just got a Haltech coolant temp sensor that's 8th MPT, and we got a weld bung here. And I'm gonna install this where our factory coolant switch is because this one is leaking. And I think when I water this elbow, I might have warped something a little bit. These threads are uh, seemingly good still, but the sensor has always leaked. All right, fast forward a couple days later, we got the coolant temp sensor done. When I was plugging it in, I did break it, unfortunately, so you can see it rotates. It still reads, but it's not ideal. So we got a new sensor coming for that. I got a new IAT sensor as well. I did a boost leak test and I realized that it had been leaking from that port or it seemingly that port. We're gonna change that out, crank it down, see if the leak goes away. And then I found a leak on the compressor cover. That's fixed, put a fresh O-ring on the speed sensor plug. And then uh, lastly, I think it was the intake manifold was leaking on the back side of that flange. So I went around and evenly torqued the flange all the way back down. And so far, so good. The last known boost leak is that IAT, but like I said, we'll have a new one today so we can swap it in. Next thing to do after this engine bay portion is done, is do our fuel line adapter. So let me show you that real quick. This is my plan. We've got this uh, Dash 6AN flow valve. This is made for fuel. It's like a ball valve inside here. And then it's got, you know, AN fittings on both sides. We've got a little Russell straight, AN, AN, female to female. And then we have this little T here. The plan is put it here essentially. So our fuel line that comes into the regulator will just go to this fitting instead. And then this side will go to our regulator. So basically it'll look kind of goofy, but it'll sit something like this here and then I can just shut the valve and it should work as normal. 
When I open the valve, it should be a little bit less resistance given that we don't have the regulator trying to restrict it to keep the pressure up and all the fuel should flow out this valve through a hose that I would build and into an imaginary gas can that would be right here. Well, it didn't take very long and I think it's gonna work pretty damn well. So basically it's just a straight shot, you can see. It's just a fire starter, let's just shoot gasoline all over the hood and then have it come down on the hot engine and just create a massive fire. I do still need to drain the tank so we can set the fuel level values for the IC7. It's something I've been meaning to do. So we might go ahead and uh, give it its first test run doing that and get that all squared away. Very nice, that's pretty sick. And of course with the ECU we'll turn the pumps on and we'll run them both and it should really get that fuel out of there quickly. I have successfully drained all the 93 octane out. My buddy Matt let me borrow these cans. I, I took three and only needed half of one, but at least we have enough. And we pulled about eight gallons or so out of the car, which seems about right. So now we gotta read what our voltage is at our cluster from our sending units, and then we'll slowly add fuel back one gallon at a time and keep track of those voltages. And then we can kind of set our range so that our cluster will show us how much fuel is in the car. We don't wanna be too precise because then it'll be too finicky and every time the fuel sloshes, it'll show a change on the cluster. But we don't wanna be too broad so that we end up using you know half a tank and we don't see anything until we get all the way down to that half tank. So gotta kinda figure it out. I gotta read some directions, but we'll, we'll get it. Things are coming right along and last night I screwed up and bought like a gallon short of what I needed to top this thing off so you can see we're at, uh, oh, you can't see anything with this stupid lens here, sorry. Uh, yeah, 80% fuel there. So, you know, I got my table, I've just been populating it with my values. I know it's blown out because the lighting, but uh, there are our numbers there. If I can, there you go. So I just wanted to show you guys just how fast this thing fills. We've got both pumps here, I'm gonna run both of them. They are two 450 pumps, so, you know, it's a lot of fuel. Check this out. It's backing up and the hose is coming out at such a high rate. So we almost have a big mess there, but look at this thing. It's absolutely shredding. If I don't hurry, it's gonna dump all over the floor. Well, it is the next day and uh, I was not quite ready. Freddie got free a little bit sooner than I expected to log in and just dial things in in the ECU before we hit the dyno tomorrow. And because of that, I had to rush over here. And uh, it's kind of ironic, we do not have good Wi-Fi in that building. And a year ago or something, when we were trying to tune that truck, we had the same problem. And it just reminds me how, how uh, I don't know, behind schedule I am on getting shit done. And all right, now you guys can see kind of live what it looks like to have somebody remote in. Basically, it's just like a ghost is controlling the computer. So you got to make sure you're in the driver's seat, you can turn the car off, turn it on, give it throttle, whatever he might need that he would do himself if he was in person. Uh, but you know, you just, you just keep him pulled up, you keep him on the text, and uh, try to do the, the best you can. What's up, guys? Good morning. It is dino day. Let's go. We are one minute out. Thankfully this place is close, about 35 minutes from my house. It's called Velocity Motor Works in North Raleigh, North Carolina. Let's get it. Gate springs in my trunk. We're gonna pull them out and we're gonna put maybe the smallest one in we can and then go out from there with the boost control solenoid, provided things work how they're supposed to. guys i've been filming what i can and uh we are done on 93 octanes and i believe from what i remember it made like 453 and like 380 ish torque that is on wastegate spring 
uh, we added a little, or we actually put a smaller spring in because it was not working correctly for whatever reason. And we're on uh, uh, 13 pound springs maybe. And I think that was on 16 pounds. So it's creeping a little bit, but then it's holding. So whatever. Uh, now we're gonna put some corn in it. So I got my drain tank here and we'll put some corn in it. there i don't know what the final run was we're messing with some traction control stuff but 596 528 i think we had a little more than that maybe 604 if so i'll put that on the screen right now and uh yeah that's what we're calling it so e85 which was really like e68 and uh we're on stock cams i did not remember that freddie told me that on stock cams we would not make the power that i was hoping for which is like closer to seven the six is still sick and uh it's a nine interference motor i don't have to reshim it and get all the valve turned out in so i'm pretty happy with that and uh, we'll pick back up once we get back in the trailer and stop the cash clock that's currently running right now all right we're back in the shop and the dyno day went really well overall we had a couple of things that i wasn't able to film since it was just me like a turbo feed line that was leaking all over the place it was leaking at the block it was also leaking at the turbo i had to build a new line on the fly thankfully we had a hose shop close by and then a couple other little issues like the wastegate spring, which I think I mentioned, but I didn't film that. I had to swap the springs out, had to switch the wastegate hoses uh, from the top to bottom of the gate. I think I had them backwards, so we overboosted. Little stuff like that. Overall, it was a great day. I am a little bummed at the 607 horsepower mark, although it's pretty solid and that's great for a street car and well over what I wanted to make when we were running an AR5 trans. I just feel like we have a little more in it, but the turbo is maxed out. So I've decided to make the executive decision of putting a bigger exhaust housing on the car and we're gonna put cams in it. Now the exhaust sounds like already done, the fabrication's already done. It was just another welding day, you know, you've seen plenty of those. And you can see we have the head apart. I've got brand new BCHD springs in here with titanium retainers. Everything is fully installed and we are gearing up to put in some BC stage three camshafts. That's a 272 exhaust, 272 intake, and it should make the power that we want. It's over budget, it's not what I plan to do, but you know what, fuck it. 